Can you see that? Yep. Okay, so uh, today's speaker is Carlo Lang from Massey University. So take away, Carlo. Great, thanks for the invitation, Lachlan, and thanks for uh, at least tuning in, if not physically being here, obviously. Um, so I'll talk about some work that I did last year on chimeras. Um, so a little bit of background, chimeras occur in networks of coupled oscillators. So we use coupled oscillators to model lots of things. Synchrony and um, various things like flashing, flashing fireflies, neurons, arrays of lasers, anything that can oscillate and um, communicate with something else that's oscillating to form some sort of network. So for a long time, there was a standard wisdom that all to all coupled networks go to one of two states, either full synchrony or what we call play state, which is basically a uniform distribution of phases around some period, periodic orbit. Those are the two possibilities, basically depending on whether the coupling was attractive or repulsive. Um, but then in the last 15 years or so, people have studied many systems where we get the coexistence of these two states. Um, so in a network, we have coexisting synchrony and asynchrony. Um, so these were first seen about 2002 by Kuramoto and then named chimeras by Steve Strogetz two years later. And they formed a, it's basically a whole industry. I'm sure you've all heard of the, the term. Um, so what I'm going to do is show you how to analyze such a state in a network of two coupled popul populations of identical oscillators. So if we just consider a single network, first of all, um, so this is a network of all to all coupled Stuart Landau oscillators. Um, so here we have our equations. So X is complex and we have the local dynamics, which is just the normal form for hot bifurcation. And then we have some sort of coupling to the mean field here. Um, so the coupling is through, uh, well, there's this phase shift beta, which will turn out to be important, but there's this, the, the mean here. So X bar in this case is the average of all the Xs. Um, so if we just choose some standard sort of parameters, epsilon, which is this small number in here, to be 0.05 and beta, this phase shift to be close to zero, then we have only synchrony being stable. So if I click on this, I hope you can all see the movie. The um, movie's so not it's visible. Just, it's not visible. Maybe you have to share the window for the movie or something. Okay. Um, yes, you might have to do a new share or something like that. Okay. There we go. Yep. Okay. I'll have to remember to do this for each movie. Um, so this is a simulation of the Stuart Landau oscillators. It's showing a transient. Um, so initially they're all reasonably spread around um, at the start now, but then over time you see that they'll eventually end up synchronized at the end here. So that's typically what we see for an all to all coupled um, network. Now I have to share the screen again. Back to here. Um, so that's typically what we see for a single population, um, either pure synchrony or this display state. So now what we're going to do is couple two of these populations together. So that's what we have here. Um, so we've got two equations for the two populations. There's n oscillators in each population. Um, so we have the, the same sort of local dynamics here. And then there's this coupling to the average of the first population, x bar 1, and the average of the second population, x bar 2. Um, so the mu is the within population coupling, and the nu is between population coupling. So it's just the same as the previous one, except now we're coupling the two populations together through their mean fields. So that's the first population and the second population is the same equation. We're just interchanging the indices of these two mean fields here. So if we do that, then we find a chimera state. So I'll show you a movie of that. And do share this one. 
Um, so on the left we see one population, on the right we see the other population. So these are, this is the complex plane, so we're showing the position of all the oscillators with these dots. And you can see there's a bit of a transient, um, but the left population, the red ones, they gradually come together and synchronize. But the blue ones on the right, um, they form this partially synchronized state. So you can see there's some sort of structure there, but they're certainly not synchronized. Uh, they're not perfectly synchronized, and they're not also in this display state where they're equally spread around um, that circular curve there. So it's easier to see the system in a rotating coordinate frame if I There aren't very many movies, so it should be okay. So here we are in a rotating coordinate frame. Um, so this system of the Stuart Landau oscillators, if you look at it, it's invariant under a uniform shift or rotation in the complex plane, so adding a constant to all the phases. Um, so what that means is we can go to a rotating coordinate frame where the synchronized group is stationary. That makes life easier, so that's what we've done here. So the red population on the left is synchronized. Um, and stationary in this rotating coordinate frame. And now you can see the pattern on the right of this sort of invariant curve that all the oscillators in the partially synchronous um, population sit on. So you can see all the oscillators in the partially synchronous group have a different frequency, uh, otherwise they wouldn't be rotating. So they're partially synchronous and they also have a different average frequency from the synchronous group on the left there. So that's what we mean by a chimera state. Um, so it's unusual in the sense that this is obviously not just a product of the attractors for the two uncoupled populations. It really is a new state that comes about because of the coupling of the networks together. Um, it also breaks the symmetry. So there's a symmetric version, obviously, if you just interchange the two populations. So it's a state that has less symmetry than the network. So that's one of the things that I would say defines a chimera. It's the coexistence of synchrony and asynchrony, and the state has less symmetry than the original underlying network. So um, you're not forcing or breaking the symmetry of a, a network to get this state. So if we go back to the talk. Okay. So as I said, it doesn't exist when there's no coupling between the two populations. So there's lots of papers out there, lots of results, but they're basically all numerical. So people do exactly what I just did, which is simulate a large set of ODEs and say, oh, look, we found a chimera. So I'd like to understand them in a bit more detail or sophistication. So how do we analyze these states? Well, if we look at the state, population one is synchronized, so we don't need to describe all the oscillators in that population by different variables. They're all the same variable. So we can say that variable is Y. So that Y just satisfies an ODE. It's the ODE satisfied by all the oscillators in the first population. Um, their dynamics, they, they feel their mean field, but that's just Y because they're all synchronized. And they feel the mean field from the partially synchronous group. So the partially synchronous group is our x bar. So that's the mean of the partially synchronous group here. So the synchronized group is described by an ODE. Each oscillator in population two satisfies their own ODE. So now we have the dynamics as before. They feel their mean field, which is this average. And they also feel the mean of the synchronized group, which is just the value of the synchronized group, the capital Y. Then we take the limit as n tends to infinity, so we take the continuum limit. That doesn't affect the synchronized group, they're all the same, but now the partially synchronized group, they lie on this curve we see here. Um, so you can imagine taking this limit that the finite number of oscillators here will fill in this curve and be some sort of continuous curve that we can describe by a shape and a density. So they're both parameterized by a phase angle we call phi here. So they lie on this curve and the distance from the origin at phase phi is just r of phi. And you can see the density is not uniform. It's more sparse over here, more dense over here. So a density called p of phi. 
So we have two continuous variables now, P and R. And we want the dynamics of those two variables. So the way to do that, um, using an idea from Antonio Bolitti, he published a few years ago when they were looking at um, self-consistent partial synchrony. Um, so this was derived from using his results. Basically the idea is we write the state of a, an oscillator and complex variables in polar form with a radius and phase. So we can write the ODE for this complex variable in polar form. So this is just the definition. F is dr dt and g is d phi dt. So these are the dynamics of an individual oscillator in the asynchronous group and they feel the mean fields here. And you can then work out the dynamics of these two continuous variables, R and P. They're given by these two PDEs here. So R evolves using this function capital F and then capital G as well and the partial derivative here. And then we have the dynamics for P, the density is just this one here. So it's like a continuity equation. Um, so here's our density in here, and then there's the d phi dt in here. And this mean field is now, remember, it was the expected value of um, x. So it's just the, the average of r e to the i phi weighted by the density. So that's what this is. So this big r e to the i phi is the shape of the curve, and then we multiply it by the density and then we integrate over the whole curve to give us the, the mean in there. So just to summarize, what we've got is a pair of PDEs. So I'm just writing those down again, just ignore this blue term for a second. We have two PDEs and an ODE describing the synchronous group and they're coupled through this integral. So it's quite a nice formulation, two PDEs and an ODE coupled together through an integral. Um, so there's this diffusive term on the end here. Um, so that was added for numerical stability um, as Politi did. Um, so the amount of diffusion here is tiny, it's 10 to the minus eight, whereas all these other variables are order one. Um, so I'll mention that in a second again, um, what it's there for and what it does. So what we have now is a dynamical system. We have two coupled PDEs and an ODE coupled together. We can run the forward in time, find a steady state. Um, follow it as parameters are varied and linearize around them and so on, do bifurcation theory. So here's a typical solution of that continuum system. Um, so here, uh, Y was our, that describes the synchronous variable. So we can shift our coordinate frame so that's real and positive. Um, so this is R, so that's the, the shape of the curve. So if we just go back again, that's the shape of this curve. R is a function of phi, and you can see it's a small perturbation around one. And then the lower curve is P of phi, that's the density of this, of the continuum version of this set of oscillators here. So you can see they're more dense around here and sparse over here. So sure enough, we see this variation in density of the peak here that corresponds to the the more dense oscillators and the sparser ones around here. So this is a steady state of this system here. So we can then move to a rotating coordinate frame, like I said, um, because the system is invariant under um, rotations in the complex plane, move to a rotating coordinate frame with speed capital omega and follow these solutions as we vary parameters. So here we're varying epsilon, for example, so epsilon was our small parameter. It was the one in front of, if we go back to the original ODEs, it was the one in front of this part here. So basically epsilon being small means we're attracted to the limit cycle of radius one quite strongly. So as we vary epsilon away from zero, what we see is eventually a satellite bifurcation. So the blue solid is stable, red dashed is unstable. And so this is just various plots of various quantities, the real part of the mean of X, the imaginary part, this is y, the value of the synchronized group, and this is the frequency um, the, of the rotating coordinate frame that we have to go into to make this solution stationary. So we can do bifurcation analysis. We can then follow these set on bifurcations as a second variable is a second parameter is varied and 
find out bifurcations and all the rest. So we can understand the system using sort of classical bifurcation theory. Um, going back to this diffusion term, if we linearize around one of these typical states, here's the spectrum on the left, and we see these two bands. One's clustered around real part minus 40, and there's another group here at real part basically zero. And if I then continue down D down to zero, this spectrum here then lies perfectly on the imaginary axis. So it seems to be a continuous spectrum um, that's purely imaginary. Um, so I know this is seen in other systems, but it's mm, I can't really, I don't really know exactly why. So if someone has some ideas of why we'd have a continuous spectrum on the imaginary axis, then please tell me at the end. Um, but you can see why it's put in for numerical reasons. It basically pulls this spectrum away from the imaginary axis and therefore um, things like numerical continuation work because that assumes we don't have a continuous spectrum or a large number of purely imaginary eigenvalues. So that's the basic idea. Um, I'm going to go through three other systems applying the same idea. Um, so you've seen the maths. So the first system is the Kuramoto system with inertia. Um, so if we look at this one, sometimes people call this coupled pendula. Um, so now we have a second order differential equation here. So the superscripts just label the two populations, one and two. Um, there's this extra term here with a second derivative multiplied by m, which we can think of as mass. Um, it's the same sort of coupling. If you look at the previous system and you go to angular um, polar coordinates, the angular part looks a lot like this here. It's a sign of the phase differences um, with the coupling within the population and the coupling between the populations. And the point of looking at this one is that we know when m is zero, um, this reduces to a system that's well known to support chimera states. So it was introduced in 2008 by Danny Abrams and Steve Strogetz, um, and it's sort of the first system that I saw that got me interested in these chimera states. So when m is zero, we know there are chimera states. So the question is what happens as we increase m away from zero. So we do the same sort of thing. Basically, we've got to write these in polar coordinates. So we keep theta is theta, it's our angle. And to write in polar coordinates, we need a, a radius. So here we use the radius is the velocity, but we just add two to get it away, get it bounded away from zero. So it's kind of an artificial introduction of the two here. Um, that gives us some polar description of our dynamics. Um, so here's a typical steady state in our rotating coordinate frame. Um, so this is R, this is the radius. So this is the R is the two plus d theta dt. Um, and this is P is our density in blue. And this is a steady state again in a rotating coordinate frame. And the, the locked population is shown here in the red dashed line. So this is a steady state. So we see the asynchronous or partially synchronous group forms this non-uniform distribution clustered or peaked around the same value as the perfectly synchronous group. And this is the, the shape of that in my sort of artificial polar coordinates in, in order to visualize it and also to use this theory. So my guess when I saw the system was that chimeras will be stable for some interval starting at zero where we know they are stable out to some sort of M star and then there'd be some sort of bifurcation. And it turns out that's not the case. So they're actually always unstable. So we can find that by continuing in M. So what we've got here is a plot of the maximum part of the real value of our eigenvalues linearized around that state on the previous slide as a function of M. So for M is zero, sure enough, we get zero, but as we increase M, the eigenvalues move into the right half plane. This is a complex conjugate. Uh, this is a a complex pair here, so this is the real part of them. So as we move away from m equals zero, the most unstable mode just becomes more and more unstable. And even zooming in right to zero, it is exactly zero. And this general light, this is uh, continues out for about 0.2. So these chimera states 
these ones I've shown here are not actually stable. Uh, you might wonder how I found them. Well, I cheated and I made um, d slightly bigger than zero, in which case they are stable, but then when you ramp d down to zero to get the actual equations, um, you find they're unstable. So that's in contrast with what several groups have seen. Several groups have done finite time simulations of finite groups of heterogeneous networks of these systems, um, and they seem to be stable. But of course, there's differences. They show heterogeneous networks, so they had slightly different frequencies, omega. Um, they had finite networks. They simulated them for a finite time. And of course, they were numerically integrating them. So you might wonder that the algorithm for integrating the ODEs had some sort of artificial damping in or numerical damping just through the algorithm. So I'm not saying they're wrong. It's just it was a different result from what other people had, had seen. So moving on to the second example, these are Fitzhugh Nakuma oscillators. So these are a long way from a nicely rotating oscillator. These are relaxation oscillators um, used to model neurons. So each oscillator has two variables, u and v. So we've got our epsilon here, which was about 0.1, I think. So um, there's a time scale separation between the u and v, the relaxation of oscillators. We've got our local dynamics here, which are nonlinear and here, and then we have coupling. So this is for one population here. So we have coupling within the population with strength mu and between populations with strength nu. And we couple the u's, so the v to the u and the u to the u here. And we also couple the u to the v and the v to the v. So there's coupling in um, between all possible pairs of variables, if you like. Um, so this is one population. And then for the second population, it's the same equations. We just interchange these two indices, the one and the two. So I haven't written them out there. So we've got these u1, v1, u2, v2, which are obviously the means within population one and within population two of the, the two variables, u and v. Um, so these systems also show chimeras. So here's a picture. Um, so the top two show one population, the bottom two show the other population. And here we have u and v and u and v. Time is horizontal. Here we've got 500 oscillators in each population. And the color codes show the color. So in this case, the bottom population is perfectly synchronized. All the oscillators are doing the same thing. In the top population, the oscillators are not synchronized with each other, and they're actually not synchronized with the second population as well. They look like they might be, um, but if you look at the long-term average frequency of the two populations, they are significantly different. This is genuinely a chimera state. These ones in one population have one frequency, and these ones in the other population, all the oscillators, they're identical. They all have the same average frequency, and that average frequency is different from the, the frequency in the, the other population. So we can analyze this state as well using the same sort of idea. We've got to go to polar coordinates. Um, so we think about our u's and v's as being Cartesian. And therefore, we can go to polar coordinates from them. Um, the equations are very messy. I can show anyone if they're really interested. But it's the same sort of idea. It's the same equations as we had if I just skip back to the original PDs. We're always looking at PDs of this form. It's just that the, the functions here, f and g, will be different. And the dynamics of the synchronous population will be different as well. But it's the same sort of idea. Um, so what we here have here is a um, numerical solution of the corresponding PDEs. Um, so this is time horizontally, these are vertically, and up here we have R, so it's the shape of our curve. Um, and down here we have P, which is the density along that closed curve. And the main difference between this system and the previous two is that this system is not invariant under any sort of global phase shift. 
Um, so the chimera state we actually see is a periodic solution of these coupled equations. Um, so you can see it's periodic, it repeats as we move along here. So it's not a steady state of our system. The chimera state is actually a periodic solution of these um, coupled PDs. So we can do the same thing. We can follow a periodic orbit as parameters are varied. So here what I'm doing is writing the two coupling strengths. So mu is the within population coupling, nu is the between population. I'm just parameterizing by this parameter A. So what we're doing here is just increasing A. And what we see is an emark sacker bifurcation. So on the left, sorry, I've used mu twice. So this is a different mu here, mu in this picture is the flow key multipliers. So what we see here is the flow key multipliers at A is 0.2. These are crosses and you can see there's a couple here that are getting ready to pop out. And for A is 0.5, they popped out of the unit circle here. So 0.5, those are the circles. And on the right, what we've got is the magnitude of the largest flow key multipliers. So you can see they go through one here at about 0.3 something. So we've got an emark sacker bifurcation of this periodic solution, thereby giving us quasi-periodic oscillations. So a breathing chimera, if you like. And moving on to the third system. I know we don't like delays, so we've got a system here with delays in it. Um, so we've got, again, our Stuart Lander oscillators. That's the, the part here. Um, two parameters, omega and gamma. And then what we're doing is coupling to the mean field within the population with strength mu, but delayed by tau one. And then we're coupled to the mean field of the second population with strength nu and delay tau two. So that's population one, and it's the same equations for population two, but obviously we just interchange the indices. So this is now connected or coupled to the mean field of the second population and the first population here. So it's a, a symmetric system. Um, so this system also shows chimeras for appropriate choices of parameters. So here's movie, find now, go to, Share the screen. Here we go. So we see our chimera state. Um, so one population is shown with the red dots, red dot, and the other population is shown with the blue dots. And we've gone to a, a rotating coordinate frame. So this system as well is invariant under rotations in the complex plane. Therefore, we can go to a rotating coordinate frame where the synchronous group is stationary. And that's what we're showing here. Um, so you can see this invariant curve that the asynchronous oscillators lie on. Um, it's very close to a circle, but it's not a circle. And the density is not uniform. If you follow a group of oscillators, for example, here, you can see they get a bit more spread out here and they get closer and closer as they approach the red dot. So this group here spreads out around here. then gets more dense around here. So this is a steady state in the rotating coordinate frame. So if I go back to book, uh, this is a typical steady state of the corresponding delayed coupled PDEs and ODEs. Um, so on the left, what we see is the radius. So the shape of that curve, you can see it's a slight perturbation around the unit circle, and this is our density, which is non-uniform. Um, so we can then follow that as parameters are varied using DDBIFTL, which is a continuation software for delay differential equations. So um, it's a continuation of the discretized version of the PDEs here. So we've discretized the PDEs with 32 points in beta in space, if you like. 
So it's a set of a um, couple of differential equations. And we can follow the solution. So this is our steady solution here. So what I'm doing is plotting um, the maximum of p. So what I do is look at the maximum over theta of p. Um, so in, in a steady state, that's constant. That's what we've got here. The solid line is stable, the dashed is unstable. But then it goes unstable through a subcritical off bifurcation, throws off this unstable periodic orbit. So I'm visualizing that by looking at the maximum value of p over theta, and then looking at the maximum of that over one period of oscillation, and that's the maximal value here. And the minimal value over one oscillation of the maximum of p is the lower value. So it's just a way of visualizing this unstable periodic orbit in here. So just to summarize what we've showed you is that chimeras can occur in these networks of two coupled networks of identical oscillators. Uh, one population synchronizes while the other is partially synchronous. And in these four systems, it can be described by a PDE and ODE coupled through an integral. Um, one obvious weakness of this formulation is that we assume the solution is of this form. Um, so we assume it's a chimera and therefore can be described by this couple of PDOE system. So it can't describe bifurcations out of this subspace or the breakup of that curve describing the partially synchronous oscillators. Um, we've assumed there is this smooth curve. There's one question I have, is there some sort of um, higher level description of a dynamical system like this, such that a special case is a PDE and a, another special case is an ODE and we can move seamlessly between these two descriptions. Um, it would be nice if there was some sort of overarching dynamical system which automatically transitions between a PDE and ODE description of a, a set of coupled oscillators um, when that was appropriate, or at least detects bifurcations out of this space that we're restricting ourselves to by assuming we're in that space. If anyone has any ideas, um, that would be nice. And the last thing is what about heterogeneous oscillators? Um, so I've only looked at identical oscillators, um, but there's a lot of work done on heterogeneous oscillators. So if you look at the original network I looked at, Stuart Landau oscillators, let's assume our intrinsic frequency is chosen from some uniform distribution. And this is just a snapshot of our chimera state, the asynchronous group on the left and the basically synchronous group on the right. If you look at the scales here, these are basically locked and identical in their dynamics. But obviously on the left, there's no obvious correlation between the state of an oscillator and its intrinsic frequency, in other words, the color. But in the part in the basically synchronous group on the right, um, there's an obvious one-to-one -one relationship between its position along this curve and its intrinsic frequency. Um, so it'd be nice to develop some sort of theory to describe this sort of system as well. Um, so this work came out last year in PRE. There's the reference if anyone's interested. So that's the end.